Hey everyone, happy Friday to you. So this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart because I probably interrupted everybody that I that led me like forever. So uh, think about this statement that employees, providers and patients are not an interruption of our work, they are our work employees providers and patients are not an interruption they are what we live for our our biggest chunk of work they are our work however you likely feel that wow interruptions are just like part of your life and making it so that you have this inability to get your work done on a daily basis and research tells us that a 10 minute interruption costs 25 minutes to recover from. I had a leader who worked for me who actually kept track and she had one employee that interrupted her 10 times a day. No wonder she was feeling frazzled, feeling like she was unable to accomplish anything. You can't, right? You can't when you're continuously interrupted all day long. Franklin Covey has done some great research on leaders. Now, unfortunately, it's not done on leaders in healthcare because I do think that we are unique and different, okay? And, you know, we have that third facet. We don't just have a boss and people who work for us and the work that we need to do. We have the patients in our communities that we serve. So what Franklin Covey found out was that you can achieve 80% of what you need to achieve just using 20% of your time. So think about this, 20% of your time, let's say you're a five day a week leader, is an entire eight hour day. None of us has an entire day every single week to be able to achieve what it is that we need to achieve. You have to do it in less. And so if you're gonna do it in less, those four to six hours, which is what our research has found that a healthcare leader could take on a weekly basis to achieve greatness, right? But not if you're continuously interrupted. And uh, HBR, Harvard Business Review, wrote a great work or a great book called Getting the Right Work Done that said you should plan for six hours of solid work a day and two hours of interruptions. Well, whenever I teach this topic, I commonly say you got to turn that around for healthcare leaders. It's the opposite, right? It's two hours of work a day and six hours of interruptions. But right now, can we really afford between four and six hours a week when at when healthcare is in crisis leadership? Not likely. Maybe one to two. I'm going to tell you a secret at the end. Stay on till the end because you're going to learn how we're going to draw this crisis leadership bundle out for you. But meanwhile, while you're getting great work done, while you have done that, that task of setting aside some time that you are going to actually work and that what you're hoping, and remember hope it's not a strategy, hoping will be uninterrupted, how can you lessen those interruptions? Because certainly we know that your life is full of them. So the first thing to do is to make sure that you transparently communicate your calendar to everyone who works for you and who you work with. Is that putting outside your door? Is that saying, I'm going to go in, in I'm going to go into my office, I'm going to work. Is there anything you guys need before I go do that? All right. Think of words to use. Uh, Sue and I say, we call it the bat cave. I need some bat cave time on Tuesday because I have something huge I'm working on and it has to be uninterrupted time, right? No texting, no calling, no emailing, no nothing. I have to do this work. We call it the bat cave. When I was a frontline leader, like many of you were, I called it pretend like I'm dead. <laughs> like I'm dead to you people. You don't know where I am. You haven't seen me. 
I did you because I made sure to check in with my staff. I made sure that they knew where I was, but you don't just work alone with your employees, right? There are many other people that are causing interruptions in your day. Maybe, you know, we knew a leader that communicated that she was on an island, therefore unreachable by just putting a picture of the classic island in the middle of the ocean with the palm tree sticking out and she put that on on the outside of her door and when she did that it communicated to everyone okay she's having some bat cave time she's having her work time i'll save my question my interruption for later right i'll save it for later but a lot of times we as healthcare leaders don't feel like we can take that time right we don't feel like we can you have to. It's important for you to feel purposeful about your work. And nothing gives you purpose like seeing great results coming. And guess what? Your staff will respect the work they see you doing because what you're doing is you're leading the department forward. You're leading uh, them to greatness just right along with you. And when they see the things that they've been talking to you about at staff meetings, you know, or during rounding, they see it's getting done. They're like, well, geez, that's valuable time she spends in there. Let's leave her alone. The second thing is rounding. And I know you've heard us say this before, but one of the things that I remember clearly that was a result of beginning to round was that people saved their questions for me. People knew because I'd well communicated who I was going to be rounding with. People knew that I was going to spend that one-on-one -on -one purposeful and systematic time with them. And so when I did, they saved up their questions until it was time for me to round. Another thing you can do, because what's your job as a leader? Your job as a leader is to develop humans into better people, to develop people, right? And so if an employee comes to you with three or four questions a day or comments or something they have to tell you and that it just can't wait and you just, you know, very gently coach to, you know what, I noticed next week on my calendar, I have time with you. Can this wait until then? You certainly don't want to appear as though you're not available or not approachable. It really is a fine line that you walk and it takes courage to develop the skill. It takes this trust between a leader and their employee that I can wait. You're right. It can wait until my time with you. Right? So just this gentle, positive coaching that I noticed. And I would really like to talk to you about that. But I'm working on something important right now. And I, I can't afford an interruption, right? So, but if it's important, by all means, sit down. All, all means, sit down. And if, it ha if I have to solve it today and it can't wait till next week, by all means, sit down. So again, your body language really counts with that, right? That you are approachable for them. You want to help them. But again, if it's complaining about the same physician for the 800th time that they always complain about, that can wait can it instead of costing you a total of 35 minutes to regain what you were doing if you set aside a, a precious hour and you have two 10 minute interruptions you lost the entire hour right you lost the entire hour so the third thing that i want to mention is expressing gratitude that when you know knowing your people in knowing what makes them tick everybody needs to know feel how they're doing you know to have that feedback and when you validate wow great job guess what that behavior is going to be repeated right and that behavior for instance them coming to a rounding with you with questions that they've held and didn't because they didn't want to interrupt you or interrupt your day huge, right? You thank them profusely for that. So as I mentioned, 20% of your effort that you put forth, like allows you to achieve greatness, crazy, even four to six hours. But leaders right now are trying to decide what should that 20%, what should that one to two hours a week be spent on? 
Sue and I have developed a challenge and uh, I, what, what our challenge to you is don't set New Year's resolutions this year, right? Don't do it. If you do, make them about your leadership. We've developed a crisis leadership bundle that we're going to roll out on January 6th only in fans of the framework it's only going to be here you're going to hear about it every week up until there up until then and what we've done is we've developed these tiny little micro changes that you can take minutes every day to do that will get you that working towards 80 percent of your results without having to spend an eight hour day i we promise you you won't even have to spend sometimes 20 minutes a day to do these leadership things. Now, the reason why I say forget your New Year's resolutions, because what, you know what, you're going to set a New Year's resolution to become perfect and lose weight. Stop that madness. OK, remember, well-being is part of our leadership bundle, and we did not leave that off the table. So we're going to have you taking micro actions every day for 66 days starting january 6th leading till march 12th and you're going to form new habits for your leadership it's the answer to i would love to be a better leader i would love to do the right things in small increments when i have time when the whirlwind hasn't sucked me in i just don't know what to do we got that for you enjoy your weekend